In an era filled with fast bowling and unrestricted in the use of the bouncer, he never stopped hooking, despite many incentives to do so. He received a hairline fracture of the skull from Richard Hadley, was knocked unconscious by Imran Khan, had teeth knocked out by Malcolm Marshall and was hit in the jaw so painfully by Jeff Thompson that he could only eat ice cream for lunch. Still, he did not stop. This was KDN Hay talking about one of the most underrated cricketer of India, the fearless Mohinder Ramanath. The words grit, guts, determination and selflessness personified his roller coaster career which began in 1969 and spanned two eventful decades. He started his career as suspect against short pitch fast bowling and finished it as one of the finest and bravest players of pace. Known as Jimmy, he was the man of the tournament when India won its first World Cup in 1983. Fiery fast bowlers Imran Khan of Pakistan and Malcolm Marshall of West Indies have praised his batting, courage and ability to endure and master pain. However, during his two decades at the top, he was dropped from the Indian side on several occasions, but each time he fought his way back with sterling performances, playing excellent domestic cricket and making it hard for the national selectors to ignore him, thus earning him the name the King of Comebacks. So today, we're going to dive deep into the incredible cricketing journey of Mohinder Amarnath, a true King of Comebacks in the world of cricket. Mohinder Amarnath Born on September 24, 1950, started his journey with high expectations thanks to his legendary father, Lala Amarnath. However, his early years in international cricket were marked by inconsistency and injuries. Despite the setbacks, Amarnath's determination and resilience were already evident as he refused to give up and continued to work on his game, laying the foundation for his comeback story. After his unsuccessful debut, he had to wait a few years before making his first comeback. In 1976, in a series against the West Indies, India's second innings closed on 97 with five batsmen being retired hurt. In fact, in the first innings, captain Bishan Bedi declared at just 306 for 6 due to the fear of Indian bowlers getting injured as three batters were already hospitalized. This was the level of fear that the West Indies bowlers induced in the oppositions. But Amarnath, as fearless as he was, made an unbelievable 60 with 7 fours and 3 sixes in the second innings on a terrifying Sabina Park pitch. This series gave the world just a glimpse of how fearless Mohinder Amarnath can be. Because of his playing nature, West Indies legend Sir Vivian Richards called him one of the nicest men to have ever played the game. Early in 1979, in a test match against Australia in Bombay, Jimmy tried to hook Rodney Hogg and fell on his wicket. Later that year, during India's tour of England, he was hit on the head half a dozen times but still kept refusing to wear a helmet. The culmination came when he failed to pick up a ball from Richard Hadley, he missed it and it actually fractured his skull. It was several months before Amarnath could play again and then he found that the injury had damaged his eyesight. Getting hit repeatedly on your skull would have scared most of the batters. But Mohinder Amarnath was built different. He refused to back off and continued to play those terrifying bounces aggressively. It was a career of peaks and valleys for Amarnath. In 1982, Mohinder Amarnath made one of sports, let alone cricket's greatest comebacks when Amarnath was again selected for the 1982 series against Pakistan and he came back in fashion. While Imran Khan was ripping the flesh of the Indian batters taking 40 wickets in the 6-match series, Amarnath scored 3 centuries and 350s in his 10 innings scoring 584 runs. Imran Khan regarded Mohinder so highly that in his book, All Round View, he went on to say that in the 1982-83 season, Mohinder was quite simply the best batsman in the world. Imran further went on to state that Mohinder should have played non-stop for India right from his debut in 1969 to the time he retired. In the West Indies, immediately after the Pakistan series, he carried on against Roberts, Marshall, Holding and Garner from where he had left off against Imran and Sarfaraz. He was selected as the player of the series after hitting 598 runs in his 9 innings. And in this series, one of the instants which truly showed his fearless nature was when Amarnath had to retire hurt after being hit on the head and had to go to the hospital. At the time, the score was 91 for 1. He returned to the game after getting 6 stitches on the head when the score was 135 for 5. Immediately after coming back, he wiped the blood off his jersey and went ahead to face those dangerous bowlers again. Amarnath was advised not to return to the field, but was he going to listen to anybody? He went and was greeted immediately with a bouncer from Holding. It was given that Holding would try to intimidate Amarnath by bowling a bouncer and indeed he did so. 
while most would expect that a batsman in such a situation would do the prudent thing and duck, right? But did Amarnath do so? Amarnath stood his ground and hooked the ball to the boundary. He went on to make 80 and was hooking till the end. His fearless nature was appreciated by one of the most deadliest bowlers, Michael Holden. He said, what separated Jimmy from the others was his great ability to withstand pain. A fast bowler knows when a batsman is in pain, but Jimmy would stand up and continue. Only a few batsmen can claim to have withstood the four-man West Indian base attack and Amarnath was one of them. At his best, Mohinder could even overshadow Gavaskar. I can hardly name any Indian batsman who kept the collective team's interest so much on his mind and was so unselfish. Moving on, this purple patch continued into the 1983 World Cup where Amarnath scored 237 runs in 8 innings and was an effective reserve seamer. In the semi-final against England, his accurate seam bowling fetched him the top order wickets of David Gower and Mike Gatting. He gave away only 27 runs in his 12 overs for an average of 2.25 and over, the lowest among all Indian bowlers. Returning to bat, he scored 46 runs to give India a solid foundation and was named the man of the match. In the final, when Team India was struggling, he was there at the pitch for the longest period scoring 26 runs. You might think that 26 is not a huge score, but in a situation when batters are not able to withstand the pressure, these type of innings are very necessary. Still, India could only make 183 and it looked all but over for India. But with the heroics of the fielders and bowlers, India won the final to lift the trophy for the first time. And Mohinder Amarnath played a crucial role in the final, taking 3 wickets for just 12 runs. And like the semis, he was named the man of the match in the final. Amarnath ended his career with 4,378 runs in 69 tests at 42.50. Incredibly, he scored 3,008 runs abroad at 51.86 with 900s, while managing just 1,370 at 30.44 with two centuries at home. Nobody in the era of the deadly four-man pace attack of the West Indies had gone to the Caribbean and played in such an aggressive manner. West Indian fans were used to seeing opposing batsmen duck every bouncer, however, Amarnath stood tall with his lucky red rag in the back pocket and hooked, never intimidated and never backing down. It was a performance that earned him the respect of every cricket fan in the West Indies. Mohinder Amarnath's legacy extends far beyond his own career. His story serves as an inspiration to countless aspiring cricketers, teaching them the importance of perseverance and resilience. Even today, his name is synonymous with the comeback stories in the world of cricket. Mohinder Amarnath's journey from early setbacks to becoming the king of comebacks is a testament to his character and talent. He remains a true inspiration to cricket enthusiasts worldwide. He was appreciated by everyone in the world of cricket and in the book, Idols. Indian legend and compatriot Sunil Gavaskar described Mohinder Amarnath as the finest batsman in the world. And talking about legends, do you know how good was Sunil Gavaskar? If your answer is no, click on the video being displayed on your screen.